I'd like to start with two simple words. Dead beef. Now, if you ask any programmer that has to debug and look at memory, they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. One of the techniques we use for debugging is initializing memory in a format we can understand. Now, when I'm looking at a memory dump and I see the phrase dead beef, I know this value was written by a programmer. It conveys meaning and it conveys purpose. Now really all of software is this way. A program really just represents an idea, an algorithm, a process flow in a digital format. It's not just random ones and zeros, though it may look like it. The program takes the intention of the programmer's mind and runs it, and it accomplishes something meaningful, a purpose. And I can tell you, it's really, really hard to do this. It's really hard to get a system to run as intended and then keep it running over time as you make changes. Now I'd like to compare this to human DNA. It's estimated that there's 3.2 billion base pairs in the human strand of DNA. That is a lot of information. I mean, the, the DNA, it's, it's literally a 3D blueprint of how to replicate a cell. It's amazing. And it's strikingly similar to how hardware and software work. It just seems to exude design. got to think, how much more difficult is it to get a strand of DNA that can replicate itself and grow into more and more complexity completely alone without a mind guiding the process? Now, there are several definitions for the term evolution. It can mean change over time. It can mean minor changes in an organism to produce new characteristics. Or it can mean major changes in an organism to produce new kinds of organisms. Now this process would fall under mutation, natural selection, or genetic drift. Now I wonder though, what's so irrational about including design in that argument as well? I mean, let's go back to the software analogy. Now, it has all the traits of evolution change over time, similarities within different versions. Now, within a specific version of the software, there are certain optimizations that we bait into the algorithms that improve the performance of the system over time. But for an entirely new feature, a major change from one version to another, this requires new programming. It requires new information, a new design. Now, by attributing the software to a programmer, does this impede the study of how the software works, the science behind computing? Of course it doesn't. Now, as a scientist, does attributing certain kinds of behavior on how a biological system, a cosmological system works, I really don't think so. You know, I actually think as a theist, um, you really have more options available to you.
there are many more different kinds of theories you can explore, and you can continually examine the evidence and decide if something is changing by unguided process or if there appears to be a guiding mind behind something. It really just opens the door up to more possibilities.